Now, I've probably said this a few times, but I'm extremely excited about what's going on in the Masterpiece Transformer realm, the third-party realm more specifically, and I have to say there's a lot of things that I'm excited about. From the Unicron project, for the HasLab Unicron, it's not exactly what I expected, but it's fair and for the price, although it's high, I think it is justified for what it is. The massive amount of plastic we're getting. I'm excited about all these releases, these reveals that we've seen from Fans Toys. And yes, that excitement is there because I know they do put out a great looking product and the figures that we want. And so I'm excited about that. I'm excited about, well, I'm even excited about some stuff that's not Masterpiece like Siege stuff that's coming out. I'm excited about Transbots and all of the mini releases that they have uh, hinted at coming in the fact that we are seeing the sea spray show up. Mine's in the mail. Yeah, the check's in the mail on that one. I'm excited about a lot of MMC offerings such as their four Autobot tapes, their Bruticus. I'm just curious how this Bruticus is going to turn out, but I'm still excited for it. I'm actually not in on it until I see more of it. And then I'm of course excited about all the Takara offerings we're getting for the last part of this year. There's a lot a lot to juggle, a lot to balance, a lot to be excited about. But, you know, really, I think the thing that excites me most is this whole war of combiners. So I want to talk about this today. I want to talk about the compounded combiner problems. And here's the thing. I want to discuss fan toys. And the good, the bad, the positives, the negatives. We got some issues that we're going to deal with. I want to talk about the competition and where they're at or where they are not. I want to talk about some of these questions of how they're all going to go together. We still don't know everything 100%. And I wanted to hold off because still some stuff is classified as rumor. I want to talk about price and then, uh, of course, I want to talk a little bit more about Zeta and uh, their role or position or their place in all this. So let's get into this and let's get started talking about Fans Toys. The first question I have about Fans Toys is why are they doing two at the same time? And that one perplexes me. I don't understand why they're doing two at the same time. There, There's really only one explanation in my opinion. My belief is that somehow these two are sharing some sort of engineering is the only reason you'd want to do two at the same time. Aside from that, it sounds like it's a gigantic uh, hindrance to do two at the same time. And so with that, you've got on top of it, the, the price of juggling two uh, expensive beasts that you're trying to buy as each piece comes out. And then you're juggling your production along with the other figures that you have promised the moon and still promising no more figures. And some question of whether we're going to get some of these new promises that we just saw at TFCon by the end of the year. But we also want to finally complete a combiner or, start, or even get the first limb, which I don't doubt we will see that first limb pretty quick. Um, you know, relatively. Not tomorrow or not in two weeks, but probably in a month, a month and a half till we get the first limb. And we can, that's really where we're going to start seeing a whole lot with the fans toys. But the other thing is, how long will it take since they are doing two combiners and they are coming out more like, uh, you know, one part of Minasaur, one part of Superion, and I really feel it's just going to keep being one Minasaur, one Superion over and over and over. How long will it take to complete even one set if they're doing two at the same time? So that's always been kind of a, a, a challenge to me mentally and why would they do that? So I don't know. I don't know how long it'll take. I know Zeta got theirs out in you know a little over a year, like right around a year, maybe a year and two months. So uh, that's kind of where I'm saying, well, if Zeta did it in that time frame, they should be able to do it in that time frame. But they only did one at a time. So I'm really curious how long it's going to take. The other thing is the parts. Now I'm hearing the parts are going to be included with the last Limbot, and and I have an issue with that to a point. Now. We have been, I guess, uh, set up by Zeta to expect $140 is going to give you the a really well-engineered bot itself. 
for the leader bot. It's going to get you all the parts to combine it. And, and and it's this is a big bot. These are a lot of parts, and that's a hundred and forty dollars. Now, Fans Toys uses premium materials. Fans Toys uses uh, premium paint. Fans Toys is higher quality when you look at those aesthetics and you look at those parts of it. And so I give them that. So the 180, that's $40 more. I can see that if it still included the parts, but it didn't include the parts to even combine it. So then you're looking at it and you're saying, okay, how much are the parts? Well, if we're looking at $180 for your last Limbot minus 105, that's 75 bucks for the combining parts. Now I understand that we have to pay for what we get. But my problem is that we should have sort of given, been given some guidance on this up front. And my thought is, are we going to jump in on this set and start buying them before each release sells out and you cannot complete a figure without spinning astronomical mounts? Or will there be a box set at the end? Now, I'm thinking that if there is a box set at the end, just like with Constructor. Now, these are two different companies. They, they operate in a completely different fashion. But if there is a box set that they put out at the end, then I would think the price of the box set would be significantly lower than each individual bot. And that, that's just a mentality that I have. Now I'm thinking right at 600. And so then of course the parts are included. That's my thought and that's my guess and that's my pure speculation. But I do want to say that we don't know this going in and there's reasons why they won't tell you this going in. Because you wait to the end, you see if you like it or not, and then you, you buy a box set. Now, if you choose to, to go that route, you may not be able to get a Motormaster or a Silverbolt or one of the limbs. You may just have miss out on that and be paying a double or triple late tax on that thing. So next up, I want to talk about the competition. I have not heard anything about DX9 doing anything whatsoever with their Minasaur. They put out two bots. I have heard some stuff. Expect the next one soon, but we have gotten no forward guidance that I know of or that I've heard. So I'm looking into this and I'm, I don't see what's up with it. It's a possibility. Did they get discouraged? Are they not going to put it out? Or are they doing what we hear x Transbots is doing and redesigning their Motormaster? Then would they need to redesign those two, the next two bots so that it would work better? I mean, who knows? I don't know. And that bothers me. I mean, it bothers me that the DX9 is getting so far behind in this game since they pretty much were on par with where x Transbots is. So let's talk about x Transbots. X Transbots has four bots out. All four limbs are here. We need one more bot, and it's sealed deal. And X Transbots is going to be my combined one. That's my plan. If I have to go Fan Toys as my combined one, I, I kind of prefer the size of their limbs for the, the for the DX9 and for the Fan Toys for a display in bot mode for me personally. That's my personal preference. A lot of other people prefer the X Transbots shorter, closer to the masterpiece cars, the MP car look, but that's not me. That's I want the bigger ones for display in bot mode. And with that, if I feel that the fans toys combined mode is vastly superior, which I, I don't know, then I would I would do that. So that's why kind of why I have a juggle most sets. But it bothers me now, like how long is it gonna be for X Transbots to get this out? Now, that's one of the most hush hush quietest companies out there lately I, I don't know why they're not giving us so much forward guidance now we did recently get from x transbots their sea spray and i'll be getting mine soon and i'll you know i'll review that and go through all that but that kind of says we're peppering in some other releases and i don't know if they're they're getting caught up on their backlog before they give us this motor master so they have more time to redesign it i know we're still waiting on springer and then, of course, we have the Dr. Egg that's gone nowhere, the Dr. Egg to nowhere. And so I would like to see the Dr. Egg. I like to see all these great things. And I think that some of the things to put on the back burner are actually easy projects they could have had done and out by now. So, so how much of their resources are going to this Motormaster? And 
And you know what? I wanted the product. So I'm not complaining that it's going to take a long time. I just want to know what's going on. And then the question is, will Xtransbots do a box set down the road? Who knows? I don't know if they're going to or not. And the, the thing is, they will never tell you this. They will never say, we will release a box set down the road. But let me tell you, with Xtransbots, they have a track record now of reissuing almost every figure. Almost every figure they've made, they've reissued it. And in some cases, three times, Ollie. But I would think that track record would say, yes, you could expect a box set as a reissue down the road and probably a very affordable price. So, uh, last, lastly, Rising Force is a thing. Why are they getting into this? Why even bother? Like, I don't understand why Rising Force would bother. And I'm kind of thinking since it, nothing's materialized in the last, what, four months, three months since they came forward saying they had something. Uh, they've, they've been talking about it for almost a year now, but still haven't seen a bot from Rising Force. So I'm thinking maybe they're scared off too by all of the immense competition. So the next thing I want to talk about is price. Now I've had this price discussion before and I just want to throw it back up there real quick to remind everybody, but the looking at like, let's say Minasaur and Superion, and we're just looking at these because it's not like there's four Superions. There are four Minasaurs, but I also want to include Zeta who hasn't made a Minasaur. So starting with the lowest price, Zeta is, but I've seen it as cheap as 330 on a reissue box set. Or I don't even know if it's a whole box. I think they just put the four or the five different characters together and sell it at once. Then DX9, if they're still in the game, they're somewhere between 550 and 600. So, they, of course, they haven't told us what their Motor Master is going to cost. We don't know if they're going to go Fans Toys price, Zeta price, or what. X Transbots. X Transbots is 400 to 450, depending on how much you get the limbs for, of course, and then what their Motor Master price is going to be. And now Fans Toys is got the premium pricing of 675. Uh, I, I mean, you can be savvy and get some of these cheaper and get the price down to like 640 or something. But still, just, and there really is no such thing as MSRP. There's just what they, the third party just prices it at. It's, there's a little bit of guidance, but it's not written in stone anywhere what you charge for it. But anyway, 675 is a big chunk of change. I struggled with the idea of 600 on getting an extra combiner that I already own and am happy with. And now it's 675, and and, and it's just because it's fans toys, and it's because fans toys always seems to get more expensive if you change your mind down the road. So that's why I'm on it. But that's a big chunk of change, and that's a 75 dollars shift, and I'm in on two. That's a 150 dollars shift that I wasn't expecting. Next, I want to talk about all the other releases that I plan to see coming up from fans toys, like Blur, the, all the mini bots. Uh, the Blitzwing, the Astro Train, the Soundwave, the Blaster, uh, the tapes, all that stuff. With fans toys juggling that, I see them peppering in in between a combiner release, something else. Uh, well, I expect a Blur next, and then a, a leg for Minasaur, and then another figure of there's 20 on their list here, and then uh, a figure, uh, a limb for. Superion and just going like that till they've completed the combiners and within that they've completed given us a lot of what they've promised That is how I see it going now. I don't know for sure, but that's kind of the track record. They're on Same thing with X Transbots. I see them doing that. I see them putting out their their uh, Springer the virtues we needed. I see them putting out these figures that they keep promising us in between releases I don't know what's coming next. I would like to see Motormaster and get it done and then see Springer, but Springer's like three years on the back burner. And lastly, I want to talk about Zeta and and kind of their absence from the whole combiner game other than reissues. And they've teased us a Raiden, they've teased us a Predaking, they've given us nothing on it and no forward guidance whatsoever. And now they're teasing us a Unicron and I really think, I really think they knew that this Unicron 
situation was coming or they had a design and now they just cannot 3D print it fast enough to get it up and show us what's going on. And they have literally halted the work on these other ones, Raiden and Predaking, to give us a Unicron to take on Takara and Hasbro head to head. And so I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I think that's a bad move. I really do. I think that they should be giving us what we want and then show us a Unicron that we know what we're going to get. So if, if anybody misses out on HasLab because they expect Zeta to be better, but they don't know, we don't know, I would be mad at Zeta for that. But, you know, then again, you know, I'm in control of my own decisions and my purchases, but... I think that's that's shady, but then again, third party and masterpiece, we've seen this all the time. We see them stepping on each other's feet all the time. And I, we just don't see them stepping on official that hard. That's the first time I've seen it that hard of a step. In fact, even when Fansways puts out something that Takar's already made, it's years later. And they backed off their sound wave. So it's really interesting to see Zeta just really stepping up like, hey, we're number one. We can do whatever we want. I don't know how that's going to work. So anyway, the fun part of all this is I want to hear what you have to say. I truly want, if you have more information that I'm not seeing on some of these DX9, what's going on with DX9? Uh, x Transbots Motormaster. Uh, these parts, like, I, I, I don't see an official Fansways confirmation anywhere, but I do see some stuff, so... I want to know if anybody sees some other stuff. Hey, link it to me in the comments. But what do you think? Where, what are you in on? What are you waiting for? What are your concerns? And what of these combiner problems have compounded for you? Like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. This is Mike from the Tidarium Hangar. Tidarium Hangar out.